All right, bet. So here we are to the editing stage. Finally, got my pictures done. Uh, got my setup set up. Got my setup set up. It's a table wobbling. Gotta find a fix for this table and the creaky noise. But other than that, I was going for a more cinematic look. I did a tutorial on it. Uh, so if you're watching this video now and I'm done with that tutorial, you could click on this video right here to go watch it. So I created this look right here. But I did it in a daytime look and in a cool, warm and cool temperature. Day and night. Yeah. All right, so let's jump into this. We have our images. What I'm gonna show you first is the backgrounds that I created off of Mid Journey. And I'm gonna show you, uh, I'm gonna just, you know, upload the images, scroll through them, see what I like the best, pick that one, and then drop it into the image that we got off Mid Journey, all right? So let's get to that. All right, so here is the first look. It's this meeting room that I created based off this prompt that I wanted from the old 1960s Batman with the, you know, the purples and the, the bright, vibrant colors, but at the same time, it's gritty and dark. And that's how I came up with the idea of me sitting in the chair. All right, uh, let me find these images. I'm gonna just grab them, and I'm gonna drop them in the Photoshop and let Camera Raw pick it up. I would do this in Capture One, but I really like going through that right now. So we we'll stick to all Adobe products today. As you can see, me sitting on the chair, table, this wobbly little table. I'm set up on right now. Me going from warmer tones to find a little more cooler tones. And me agreeing with the light and proceeding to sit in, you know, the spot of the table. But what I do like about Capture One, I'm not sure if Adobe Raw can do, is that I can place uh, the image that I want to work on in the background and it'll kind of like let me overlay it so I can see if that makes sense. I'm not sure if it's going to do that. I'm going to have to go look that up. But until then, let me find an image that, this is basically the process. What I'm doing right now is the process of what I will be uh, if I were doing photo manipulation. Usually in years past, before all this AI and all that stuff, uh, digital artists would have like a folder of just stock images. You know, if they're creating something like a terrain, it'd be a stock images like mist, rocks, dirt, you know, birds, and you know, trees, you know, leaves, and we have to go build the image. It's like now you can just type a prompt and it gives you the image that you want to build inside your head automatic, already generated, which is like amazing. You know, it, it just takes years off of my work because we're just so used to building an image layer by layer on Photoshop, just layers. And then you have to, your adjustment layers and your curves, your levels, your brightnesses and all that stuff. Now you just type in that mood you want, all those levels and stuff that you just, I want it to be you know, this type of look or that type of look. It's crazy out here in the field, man. But it's a big help, so now I can just go cut the food like I'm doing right now. So I have to decide on what type of look I want. Let's just try this one and see how it looks, all right? Let's go to open, we ain't gonna be picky, all right? All right, so let me detach that. And what I'm gonna do is just hold shift and grab myself and drag it into the new background. The target document has a different pad, uh, depth than a source document. This made us a lower quality. Uh, hmm. Okay, it's cool. It's just for tutorial. We're not, you know. All right, let's just drop that. All right, let's control T. Oh shit, let me drag this up. Keep forgetting you don't have to hold shift anymore. All right, so let me do a little, a little multiply right quick or screen. Let me zoom in. Try to find my hand right there. And let me just drag myself down right where the table is so I can match it up about right there. I can see my table in the hand right there. So I should be sitting kind of close to the table once I remove my background. It's looking pretty close. So let's go to normal. All right, so normally I will use the pen tool to uh, remove my background. I still believe pen tool is the best way to extract any type of image from my background. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna use the select subject tool, which is part of the new AI. Uh, group that Photoshop has came out well the new feature and I'm gonna see how close it can get to extracting me out without me having to go in and do some minor which I might because there's a lot of contrast and you know soft uh, uh, tones in this shot so I'm looking at my legs right now I see right now I'm probably gonna have to do some lasso tools right quick but let's click on select subject and see what happens wow that's pretty close jeez zoom in use my tool that's why I brought this tablet out here all right this right quick. So this time I'll do a little quick cleanup based off whatever the lasso tool didn't catch. Let's just scroll around like, is that a chord? Yeah, that's a chord. It's a good way of removing that. Add this in, I like that green. 
Man, this little bit of green in here, and right here. Once, now there's another way you could have done it. I could have just clicked on the refine tool and went in there and see what that was able to do based off, you know, its calculations. But why do all that when you could just go the old school way? And by the way, I'm holding down shift when I'm adding this extra stuff in, and then option or alt if you're using a Mac to erase, you know, and I'm just going in and uh, adding the rest here hold down all option move that just checking the corners like this right here yeah this whole thing right here it did can't it didn't catch see so, so sometimes it's good i'm holding down option right now and it'll catch some things with some it won't you know shift all right now it's pretty good move that. keep those shadows because i could just i'm gonna show you what i'm doing probably won't copy and paste some of that action all right so uh now we can just hit the mask tool wow that's it i haven't even done any um adjustments as far as the color tone and that matched up so good man as far as the lighting this is why i did my homework before on the background that i wanted to use and i had to set up the lighting the way i wanted because i knew it was going to match the shot so with the head going back to the video the behind the scenes video where i had the headlight it was pur purposely set up for it to hit the back of my head and by my shoulders right here that's purposely why i set that light up back there all right i mean the light's casting all on the back of my arm it's brilliant you know the shadows are falling right in place now i probably could go down a little more let me see go down about right there yeah it looks pretty good i mean the shadows are falling right at the table right next to my feet now what i would do probably is take these shadows under my shoe and i'm going to uh click here and i'm going to click command j and i'm going to command object and go back to the masking tool and i'm going to command backspace and um what is it let me see let me hit option click on here yeah, I, that was right. By hitting that command backspace, I was uh, using the black uh, to knock out this um, this this white, basically. I am so horrible with words. Basically, <laughs> it was like this. It's probably why the you know, website probably want to pick me up to teach their class because I don't see the proper term. But I know what I did, all right? So basically, I know this, this was, you know, full and Backspace, uh, I mean, command backspace, it's now negative, all right? I can't think of the term right now. I'm trying to teach, don't mind me. So command D, well, let me remove some of this. I don't know, I could have hit the feather tool and all that, yeah, whatever. Option, remove this, shift, grab that, and do the same thing, option, boom. Now, let me, sh let me just do shadow, foot shadow. Now I'll put the foot shadow and multiply, and what I wanna do also is kinda of like blur that out a little bit. So blur, Gaussian blur, let's drop it down about right there. I don't know why this looks like that, let me see something. Oh, so I shaved off more shadow than I needed. Okay, so let me do something. All right, boom, Command Shift I, invert that, delete, boom, go back to my mask. Then I'm gonna hit control, Command T, and I'm gonna kinda of like warp this, and nudge the shadow up a little bit, keep the bottom, the top. So I can hide hide it under the shoe. Okay. Oops. The inner is cool. I wonder if I hit me see double double. Hold down option. Or oh, is it this way? Whoops. There we go. Nope. Let's go back to the underlining on the right there. I need a little more gaussian on that though. A little more gaussian. A little more gaussian. All right, cool. Still gonna drop that down a little bit. Look at that, man. So now let me. I want to actually see something. Now, a quick way of editing this is using the one of the built-in filters they have called Harmonization. I think it's called Harmonization. I did a tutorial on it, so if you want to see it, you can go check it out right here. And it's a quick way to basically match one color with another color. And I'm going to see how it, how it looks first before I dive into just doing the old school way of just adding levels and, um, I mean, yeah, levels, layers. Adding layers and using levels and adjustments to whatever, make corrections to your liking so let me go back up to filter neutral filler uh harmonization right under color right you want to turn that on it's going to load up and do its thing so the reference image is the image that we're trying to reference which is the the go-to far as like when it comes to pulling of color that, that image is you know that type, that image is what it wants you to reference from so i'm going to pick the background all right I'll click the background that's going to be my reference image and then i want to drop down here and then you get to choose now where is it so i think it's working because i did it on top of that the layer that i wanted which is myself let me check out the 
saturation. As you can see at the bottom, it says processing, and it turned up the yellows in my skin. I don't like that, so let me bring that down. Bring the saturation down a little more. Let me just add more to the strength. Click on a new layer and hit OK, and see what we have from there, because we might be able to just make adjustments moving forward. Okay, so it added a whole new layer. Interesting. All right, um, so we went from here to there, from here to there. That's not a bad, um, it's not a bad match and that's quick. Now I can go and add um, like a new layer here, get a black, uh, just hit B for brush. Let's go over here. And we're gonna drop this down, make it soft and have it flow to about maybe 21%. We come in here, hit X to make that black. Let me turn it up a little bit, 32. Actually, I wanna put that on top of it. There we go. And let me go to my razor tool. I don't want it too much on the back. Make sure it's soft. Yes. Whoops. Am I on my racer? All right. Yep. Just like that. And let me just click another. Add a mask and go back to B, which is our brush tool. And let's try to remove some of this excess white right here on the corner, which is what I don't like. Let me make sure that's okay. Let's start right here on the mask. We should be able to just remove them, right? Yeah, there we go. Just remove some of this excess infringement. On the, and there we go. That looks way better. All right. And I told myself I wasn't going to get real detail. I said this was going to just be a quick. Um, another thing you can notice too is like the detail as far as the quality like as myself I do look a little more well let me check between yeah the pixels you can see in my, my myself compared to the table right here and the sharpness or whatever so you, you can sell some of it but at the end of the day I could have also included a, a image of higher resolution you did see the notification at the beginning of the the project about the losing quality, which it did, it dropped. So but this is not, just, just for tutorials. I mean, if you want to do this as a, a huge print or bigger print, you know, uh, you have to do that differently as far as on, you know, dictating what you want your end result to be. If it's just going to be for social media, all right, cool. It doesn't have to be that serious. If it's going to be for print, you're selling it, start off your project with high resolution, you know, and a big enough size for that print size and make sure your you know cpu can handle it you know so or like or like i said if you want to get into like a big print you know focus on it then but until then much as i want to get real detail on this i'm not for this tutorial i i, I mean i'm sitting here i do want to add some mist i want to add some some more color balance and you know i really want to make it cinematic but we're not going to do that for that this this video all right but i am excited um this this looks great the second uh, is this idea I had right here. I did some poses for this office of me just walking around. And let me see if I can find that image. And I think I had a cigar and I think I had a cane in my hand. So it's like I already generated the images. See this, you got kind of have foresight, like how you're going to be setting up your shots and how you're going to be portraying, you know, the image because the lighting is going to be everything. So you want it to match the image, the background. Same way if I'm pretty sure, which is one of my next my biggest dreams also in filmmaking to learn how to use virtual production because the same way they match the lights off the screens that they have on the wall they have to light their their subjects also because you want to make it believable i did this for years with like just cosplaying and shooting myself and doing digital manipulations the, the older i got and the more i did it i realized well lighting has to match up in, in order to make everything look believable you know so this is the second look to match you, you know me walk around the office and that's a killer pose right there let's just use this one i mean I'm, I, I got other images i don't know you guys follow me on instagram I, I might put some of these in my broadcast channel or i'll put some of these the um the posts here on but uh this is a nice shot. So what I would do is just drag this one in here. It's gonna give me that message again. Wow, that's super. Like, wait, what is the size of this? Why is it? redo that right? Quick? Maybe the output um needs to be changed. I think. I think that's the problem. I see what's going on. I think I exported some images earlier, and yep, I see it right now. <laughs> um, I had it being reduced down to thirty percent. So unclick resize now it's going to give me a better although it is kind of high um i'd rather bring that in you just turn it to a smart image and bring it or bring it in at a high quality and then bring it down at least i'm not losing quality so let's go back to that image again let's open it all right so we're gonna see how close we can get this to match right, okay where am i dude come on dude all right let's drag him in yeah all right so Multiply. Let's go. To, let's go to more. Let's see. I, I wanted to place him back here where his feet is behind it, but he's looking pretty tall in this image. Uh, 
perspective isn't matching up, so let's go to control and let's bring him. Let me see if he's standing right there. Let me see if he's standing there. If he believes that. All right, boom. All right, so next I just click on select subject, see what AI does, see how close it gets. And I'm gonna zoom in with my L lasso tool and I'm gonna speed through this right quick. That way we can go ahead and move forward to the next part. So I'm gonna just speed through this. All right, so. Well, I forgot the cane. I'm not sure why that didn't pick up as well. Um, let me see if I can do a quick, just like that. And I like that too. Let me just put myself behind this chair. Let me see if I if I were to flip this image around, how would it look? I actually like it this way. Nah, I like it this way. All right, let me just mash out this chair right quick. At least up the top part. Grab my pen tool and just gonna go around the edge of the chair. And we can just go around and grab all that. So. I want to make a selection and let's do a radius of one. Might not need that much. Okay. And what I want to do is just command J this and drag it on top, top of this. Two different ways you could do it. You could do it that way or you could have just used this selection by hitting command and I'll go into this mask right here. Oh, my bad. And taking it out of the, you know, the mask and, uh, you know, by removing out of the leg part. So I just rather duplicate it and just stick it on top of myself like that, just like that. And that's why I lit myself the way I did so um i could position myself you know into this so i'm gonna do the exact same thing with the filter i'm gonna go and i'm gonna click on the image and we'll go to filter neutral filters harmonization it's gonna load up and then we're gonna pick our, our reference uh image which is the background it's gonna process the image wow that's nice that's a nice that's a nice balance i, I already know off the rip if i play with like some adjustment layers we just do some curves i can really make this blend the way I want and let me uh yeah so uh new layer hit okay I'm to my I'm blended like right into that scene that looks great I'll probably do something more on the uh level of um probably in increasing let's say let's add a curves right and let's just go in here and drag down to the middle right there so we'll invert that and let's go to our brush tool bring that down increase our brush size and make sure we are on the white increase that and I'll probably go down the middle like this especially in the torso area and still have to add the shadows under my feet also we still have to make sure we go back and do that but let's take a look wait what's going on I don't see any oh darken I don't know why it's on that let's go back to normal and let's try this one more time. Yeah, now it's getting darker, make sure. Yeah, whoa. Maybe not some more in the leg because technically if the light was coming between, with the light, the back light is shining on my back, you'll be able to see some light down there by my legs. I might actually add another layer and then grab a, um, a light yellow that same to the work towards the color in the back and just brush over my leg to, to kind of even sell it a little more. But I'm gonna keep darkening this middle part. Dark in there. And then remove some around my arm where the light's been hit from the top also. Like that. Maybe right there in the corner. Just like that. And then I will go and add shadows by my feet and then grab another brush. Like I said, and grab a yellow tint and go and hit around the corners. You know, say for instance, just hit new layer and let me go find sample this color right here and i will technically you know go around my edge of myself and then i will clip this to myself also right somewhere here when i say clip this to myself i mean clip this layer to um my body layer going up there yeah, somewhere here. i don't want to go too far because the light is kind of like cooler or whoa i didn't mean to do that what am i doing let's keep this low i'm gonna go lower yeah about eight all right so let's see if i were to group these could i clip this to this group i can so how do i want to blend this with multiply see the before and after before after or we can go with the what was it, a little hot spot right here i'm noticing it's kind of dim that down somewhere here yeah let's cool it down right there it's pretty hot and let's go back to burn we have to just repaint that screen color dodge overlay which is what i really like i like that and just drop the opacity down that looks great put all these in the group but from a distance it looks like i might want to tone it down a little bit i also want to drop the saturation a little bit so, here we go 
and the contrast. So let me bring the set back up and go back to the contrast first. Drop that so I'm going to my hue set, drop it a little bit, and I'm going to go to my curves to add back some of more of them shadows right there. Bring that on right there. Kind of make it actually seems like he's actually in the room, you know. And if I go on my background, maybe add like the levels and increase that right there. And let me see something. Oh, yeah. I like when the light opens up. So many options. All right. Not going to play metal too long on that, but you get the gist of it, right? Cause I'll be here for all night sitting here trying to, you know, create the look I want. I'll put the final image up, all right? Let's move on to the next image. All right, for this last look, I didn't really know what to go for because I shot it using uh, a different color. I'm gonna show you guys what I did. So I started off, you know, basically with the spotlight hit me directly with the gobo being uh, a gate. I think it was a gate, yeah, gate gobo. So many shots came out pretty good. I think I changed the color temperature a little bit and got it, you know, a little more neutral. And these are pretty cool. I was trying to give off the, you know, the old criminal, goofy type, you know, comet relief type uh, pose. Then I started adding color to it. I think using the P60C by Amaran. And these came out pretty cool. Um, I really like this shot. It's like a boss, bossed up shot, you know? This is, I like this. Got the eyes like really hidden. So if I want to go on Photoshop and just make them white, like on the comics, you know, like the white villain eyes, remove the background and put something cool back there, like a spotlight on somebody else in a chair being tortured or something. Then the title at the top saying the Riddler at the bottom, volume 23, you know, drawn by Bumbo. So I'm thinking about these things when I'm shooting and if you're shooting cosplay, you want to think about that also to make it look a little realistic towards what somebody would see on the comic cover so outside of having knowledge for lighting you, you know you have to have some type of knowledge for what you know anime looks like comics looks like you know old vintage films and old vintage cartoons you know go watch how some of the cartoonists did it back uh, in disney day you know so um that's just my inspiration you know and then i did a side pose posing to the left with the light hitting me and my my arm still caught under because i had the light directly over my head and um but I had the spotlight, you know, intersecting that with a bright light in the middle, which is pretty cool. It's really giving off. Uh, as a photographer, I always used to love shooting, you know, with objects in the foreground, you know, to create some type of depth. You know, they have something blurry in the back, blurry in the front, and the main sharpness in the middle. So um, you'll, you'll see a lot of that probably in my film moving forward, because I do it a lot in my shots. I love having some type of foreground image in the front to break up that that type of um you know lighting and you know that's just me this is the, the british look walking by uh a jewelry store up to no good sneaking like look at him sneaking by sneaking from the popos up to no good so i'm trying to think uh what image so i'm probably gonna use one of these images these are some of me posing directly under the light i was trying to just get a glimpse of my eyes so i was just moving differently as far as on the poses. And I think I'm gonna use one of these right here. Probably this one, this one, let's try this one. All right, so let's bring that image in. And then we're gonna hop over to Mid Journey and see, um, here we go. So I had some different images, you know, for some different prompts of different areas that I wanted. And since Mid Journey went to version six, the images look way, way more detailed. So it's a balance of dialing back the generations and keeping it up because you want high quality, you know, looks. But sometimes you have to dial it back because it's to the point now it's like overthinking I'm seeing on Mid Journey. And, and, and the focus is trying to make the image look so realistic that they're taking out a lot of the creativity that I'm so accustomed to from the older versions, which gave me kind of like, you know, um, at least some inspiration for like ideas. It's like now everything is like focused on, you know, if that makes sense. I'm like sometimes, in other words, sometimes I want that Alice in Wonderland look or that Willy Wonka look. I want that kind of, you know, surrealness at, at a high quality. And I don't think they're able to create that yet. But um, right there going, I'm pretty sure it's gonna get there soon. But this is the background I think I'm gonna use right here. This is um, one of the ones I created. So I'm gonna drag that one in. And as you can see, I did some other ones too. Just, you know, related to some of the theater shots. I think I'm gonna do that one still. I have a comic book cover idea for that. Like outside of the lair, you know, so it was so many images, but I just want to focus on simple and color right now. A lot of those images also were just more focused on daytime color. And these are more, you know, 
saturated color. So let's get back to this. We have our next guy. Here we go. And drop this dude in here. Bring him down. You want to do a quick select subject, you know, rinse, wash, repeat. And we are going to let's just go ahead and mask this out. All right, let's see how this looks. Uh, this, that looks a little believable. But I like this pose. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna swap this background. There we go. And like I said, that's that's simple right now. You know, of course, you know, I want to go in there as far as blending, get real detail with it. But for the sake of the tutorial, not being dragged out, we're not gonna go super detail right now. But we're gonna do this filter one last time. And depend on depending on how many likes we get in the video and we get some more um some more watch time, then I'll do like a detail on how I um blend really blend the images to make it really seem like realistically believable like it was actually shot in that you know, environment okay it's not bad but i kind of already got an idea what i think i want to do i definitely want to drop the curves down bring the light down about right there i'm gonna grab my gradient tool whoops why is it backwards reverse buttons on honestly i don't like that radio let me try it like this i don't like that it's just a little too bright in the front for me let me clip that to myself and see how that looks. Whoops. I'm trying to, um, what's going on? I'm trying to zoom out and I feel like my zoom ain't working. The zoom button change or something? I'm like, oh man, these updates I gotta figure out. Well, I got this, maybe because I have the medication glass lit, I don't know. But the last thing I do want to do is add some color to these shadows. So I could just go create another curves and Clip that also, and let's go to green and bring that down, probably up here. That's great right there, I like that. That looks, I don't know, what happened? I really like this right here. Let me see if I raise this up enough, let's keep it right. Why can't I see over what happened? There we go, yep. Let's bring those highlights into the purple and see before after before after now what i want to do is grab my brush i think i'm gonna remove some from by the right here but maybe the top like right there and i'm gonna go back in and lower that and add this and then bring it back in a little bit just brush it and saw like right there brush it and saw brush it back in blend it in just so lightly but i want it at least pop a little bit yeah just like that Oh, this just a little bit. Back to the edges. Dark and slow. Just like that. So you can see like before, after, before, after. And maybe bring out some of the shadows in uh, this shoulder right here. Just a little bit. Make sure. Just a little bit like that. And maybe take some off the shoulder right there. Back. Just like that. Go right here on this right here. Well, what we're doing, ladies and gentlemen, is really dodging and burning basically this is a good case of dodge and burn maybe catch some on that hat like that and all i have to do next is just go light the cigar and you know let me see what happens if i drop the contrast on that yeah i like that and one more thing i have an idea of going to the original layer go filter blur gallery and do a iris blur create a little more depth let's see if we want to do it or is it feel blur maybe it's feel blur. Oh, snap i'm on the wrong one here we go yeah, I like that. Click OK. Now we got some more depth in there. I blur, doing a fill blur. So we got a fill blur on our background. Whoops, four. And after, even though I do like that green, I like it muddy like that. Yes, sir. That looks great. Went from this to this, this to this. Love it. Got my partner right here. Let's arrange all my guys. Let me see, get all my windows up. And there you have it, y'all. That's that's my three images. As you can see, um, I'm gonna work, I have to work on all these to, to blend them before I post the final image. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. But the one that's closest to the end, as I can see right now, is the one in the middle and the one on the right. This one needs a little work. I might actually change out the character uh, with a different pose. But that's how you take images from cosplay and use mid journey, which is what we would have been doing hours and you know, Photoshop doing stock images. But now you got Unreal Engine, you got Blender, uh, which is being used heavily. Um, I'm still on Photoshop because that's what I, my computer can handle. You know, once I start getting 3D involved in Unreal Engine, which is probably gonna be my next, you know, big step because with filming and green screen, I most definitely want the freedom 
of creating my own environment the way I want. And learning lighting right now is, is really awesome. It's gonna be a stepping stone to something greater. So my knowledge of lighting for photography is really showing in my work. And as you can see, to be able to blend that in real quick, which would have took me hours, like a few years ago, because I had to go find images. That don't work, that don't work. I don't like that, I don't like that. Now you can kind of get a full scene the stock images used to suck back then. They, they were all right, but they look so digital, especially if you got them like on Deviant or, or something like that, which most of them were like free. But now, you know, these look believable, you know, to the point that, you know, they're close enough high res, close enough high res enough to fake, if that makes sense, you know, and to use foreground images, which is what I love, of either shots of the subject or the individual or something a little more realistic, which now you can download 3D objects on like, um, you know, um, Envato Elements or any other websites. Like I'm subscribed to Envato Elements, so I know for sure they have 3D elements and you can position it the way you want and then save it as a PNG. You know, you can download that and upload that. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this tutorial. I appreciate you guys for sticking around. It's been a journey, I must say, between the lighting, um, the costume, uh, cosplaying, costuming, cosplaying. It was fun. I'm actually uh, excited about uh, whatever costume I'm gonna do next and probably what I'm gonna order. I'm thinking of uh, checking out uh, what's kind of popping right now as far as on the movie scene on Netflix or Prime. While I was waiting for some footage to transfer, I got on Amazon Prime just to like, just watch something and sit down and get something to eat between takes. And I see that they have the Zorro series out. I think I'm gonna do a review on this for Thursday. But um, I can tell it's kind of like a low budget film, but I'm learning so much just by watching it. I can tell by doing what I'm doing now, how they lit certain scenes. And it's like, as I'm working on this right now, I'm seeing movies in a different light now and seeing, I'm sitting back, okay, I can tell they overhead light on this. I can tell they raising this. I can tell they had a light. And I can tell you, man, it's a lot of money goes into like creating films, man. I can I can physically see it. Cause I know how much I pay for these lights and I know how much lights that I want or I know how much more power I would like to have. And I know the price tag for those and they're up there. Now you just imagine like a set with like maybe 10 of those lights running at the same time you know, and the amount of like, money that went into buying all those lights. You know, cause some of these scenes are like huge scenes, some are like fight scenes, and some are in the dark. And to light that whole scene in the dark, you need some power behind that light. It can't be no little 60 watt, 80 watt light. That's not even gonna pop up, especially when you shoot with high end, with those high end cameras. So it's a good learning experience. And I um, appreciate you guys sticking around. I'm gonna do more videos like this for sure every week. And, um, this was fun. I always start off saying, I'm just gonna teach one thing and I end up showing like multiple things because I don't wanna make the videos long, but I kinda just wanna just like, just make a, a video. I don't care how long it is, you know? You know, you sit back and see all these things to my YouTube in order for people to watch your video. If you want the algorithm to do the algorithm and draw people to your page, the videos need to be short and quick, you know, one minute, two, three minutes. And I don't know. I, I'd rather just give some long content, you know, just me talking, doing my thing. You know, and I, I think that helped guys connect with me more and I could connect with you guys, me being genuinely me without chopping up so many takes, trying to make a short video, you know? So that's the direction I feel like I'm going. Until then, I will see you guys later. Make sure you subscribe to the video, man. I mean, to the channel. Subscribe to the channel and like the video. I appreciate you guys. I'm gonna go get some food. Probably go hit the gym. I'm hungry. I've been editing it. I've been shooting it and lighting and micing this video. All week, all week. I feel like buddy off of uh, Tales from the Hood. This ain't no either. This ain't no cemetery. This is hell. <laughs> Yo. Hey, those jokers were so scared, man. All right, let me get off. I'll see y'all later, man.